Hmm. This sparks joy. Just to confirm. All right, I'm getting it. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week, I ask myself the same question, and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I fixed the endgame Thanos from the two pack and made him more screen accurate. Check it out if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna work on Taskmaster. I got this figure recently when I was hunting down the No Way Home Integrated Suit Spider-Man figure. I had no interest in this figure at all when it first came out, because I felt the design looked very Power Ranger-like, and I wanted to wait till I've seen the movie. And the movie got delayed by a year, so it was no longer available by the time the movie finally came out. But the design kept growing on me, so when I finally saw this at a local toy store, I did the spark joy thing to finalize my decision. All right, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. This figure looks great and not so great at the same time. Taskmaster looks pretty screen accurate, and the paint job is actually pretty cool. The metallic blue is very pretty, and the neon orange pops really well against the rest of the figure. I think the reason why I didn't like it at first is because if you squint at the figure, it looks like it's just a plastic blue figure that's barely painted especially from the back. But there are actually a lot of molded details on the figure. And when I look at the reference photos, I see that the suit is made out of various layers and materials. The inner suit seems to be a shade or two darker. So I think all it really needs is a bit of paint here and there to bring out the details. That's my analysis. Let's see if I can make Taskmaster cooler than what we got in the movie. So, can I make it? First, I want to separate the layers of armor by painting the inner suit with a darker shade. So I'm mixing blue with black until it's slightly darker than what's already on the figure. I always test on the back of the figure first to see if I'm satisfied with the color. Alright, that seems good. It's hard to tell the difference on camera because the paint is still wet. I only want this color to be slightly darker, not multiple shades darker. Another note is that acrylic paint dries slightly darker once it's fully dried so the changes should be more obvious in a bit. I'm not painting everything this color. The figure has all these molded parts on the arms and legs. I can tell that some of these areas are meant to be fabric, while others are more of a metallic armor. And painting the cloth areas darker. This is also another visual trick. Our eyes perceive darker objects to be further back, or in this case, underneath, as if it's in the shadows. This will make the lighter parts stand out more too. Acrylic paint also dries matte, so combined with everything I mentioned, this will visually break up the various metallic armor parts from the rest of the suit, making the suit feel more like a tactical armor with various parts. Next, I'm going to fix the face. There's nothing wrong with it. I just want to enhance the contrast so the details are more visible, therefore making the mask look more skull-like. I'm using a wet brush and applying a black wash over the cheeks area. The cheeks just need to be a bit darker, so I'm kind of staining it with my wet brush. There are also these fine lines on the face, so I use the same brush to apply a black wash over them, letting the paint seep into the lines. Then I cleaned the surface to make it silver again. Then, I mixed myself another blue, similar to the blue on the original figure, and apply that over any other areas that are made out of cloth, to reduce the glossiness. My goal is to make the suit feel more realistic. And the following is a step that I often do to my figures. I'm going to paint the boots darker. I want to suggest that the boots have been worn multiple times and are slightly worn out. I don't want the boots to look dirty though. I just want them to not look like it's the first time they've been worn. These characters are constantly in battle. Their shoes should reflect that. And just to add some finer details, I'm going to lightly brush on some silver here and there to make the silver bits more diverse. Nice. 
I also want to add some finer details that are missing such as buckles and buttons all over the figure. And lastly, I'm adding a black wash to the scarf thing to accentuate the folds. And then I'm lightly rubbing some silver on to make the scarf look slightly more metallic. And to finish it off, I'm applying a matte varnish over the boots and the hands because these areas are prone to paint chipping. I also apply the varnish over various areas to further differentiate the textures. Now onto the accessories. First, the claw hands. They need a manicure of two. And for the shield, I'm adding a minimal amount of silver onto the rims to suggest scrapes and scratches. And then I decided to do a black wash on the inner ring of the shield, adding more dimension to it. It didn't work. For the sword, I added some silver onto the edge of the blade to make it seem sharper and more dangerous. I also added silver onto the various studs on the handle. The arrow is unpainted. I painted over the arrowhead to make it silver and lightly brushed over the rest. And for the bowl, it's missing some of the orange details. So I mixed red with yellow to get a similar orange shade and carefully applied it over the circular looking gears on the bowl. The shade isn't exactly the same, but I think it's close enough. And because these areas are so delicate, I applied a coat of matte varnish over them to add a layer of protection against chipping. Alright, here's the finished figure. Mm. It doesn't really look all that different. All that work for nothing. Okay, the differences are subtle, especially from afar. The backside does look a bit better though. But it's hard to tell from this far, so let's take a closer look. I really enjoy the way the metallic paint reflects light, especially against the now matte texture. Mmm, the face kind of looks the same, but the scarf and the arms look better. You can't really see the legs here, but the legs are much better now too. Look at the boots. They now look like they provide layers of protection. And the legs are no longer just the same shade of blue. Actually, the whole figure no longer looks like it's unpainted. There's just enough paint here and there to suggest multiple layers of gear. I really like how it turned out. There's this military vibe to it. Still looks like a Power Ranger villain though. I actually really really like this figure now. Not only does this design look unique compared to other MCU designs, the figure is also quite easy to pose, and relatively easy to balance. The range of motion isn't the best, but I was able to get Taskmaster to do a variety of poses. The way the orange stripes pop against the figure is very aesthetically pleasing. There's just enough orange on the figure to catch her attention and not be distracting. Almost like those poisonous tree frogs. Very pretty to look at, but it's actually super deadly. I'm also really excited for the photo shoot, because in person, I can already see that certain parts reflect more light than others. It's gonna look even better in photos. So, it's time for a photo shoot. Wow, look at the way the metallic parts reflect light. It looks so cool. The reason why it works so well for Taskmaster here is because there's separation in between each metallic piece of armor. Unlike Iron Man, where the entire suit is metallic, Taskmaster's suit looks more like something an assassin would wear for a mission. You can visualize how the armor was put on piece by piece. And those bold colors. Those bold colors are a warning sign to the target. I'm having so much fun taking photos of this figure. These photos are amazing. It doesn't feel like a Marvel Legends figure anymore. Why are these photos so good? Oh, I want to share a photography tip here. Look at this photo. And now look at this one. If you like the second one more, then you and I share the same view. Here they are side by side. 
the pose is pretty much the same. The angle is slightly different. But do you know why I like the one on the right more? It's because I cropped out the area right in between the legs. I often find the hip joints area very distracting for some figures. That area usually is what makes a figure look like a toy in my opinion. And now that I've mentioned it, it's very hard not to pay attention to that area now. In this particular case, it also made Taskmaster look less bulky. But as a photographer, sometimes finding the right composition changes everything. This is something you'll see me do often. I'll find various ways to make that area less distracting. Either by turning the figure till you don't see it, or find an angle that works and have it blend with the rest of the figure. Or just simply crop it out completely. Another method I'll sometimes do is to block it with a prop. The goal is to not draw attention to that area. Anyway, I didn't expect to like this figure this much, so I'm glad I did it. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it too. You can also support me on Patreon. Patreon members get video breakdowns, digital trading cards, and more. And make sure you're subscribed because there are more Marvel Legends figures to fix. Anyway, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you. Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. Here's what you get when you become a member on Patreon. Detailed breakdowns of the paint and techniques I used in my videos. Digital trading cards. And here's the coolest one. Every month, I'll personally mail you a mini 3D poster that you can fold and glue yourself. These will come pre-cut. So you don't have to worry about messing up the fine details. All you have to do is fold, fold, fold. Apply a bit of glue. Ta-da! You made yourself this cool mini 3D poster. When you stack them side by side, they look even more awesome and you can display them anywhere you want. These rewards are designed by me using the photos I took for each figure. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. I intend to have multiple tiers of membership levels, but for February only, I'm going to combine all three tiers into one. So if you join now before the end of the month, you'll get access to all the rewards I listed above. And it's totally fine if you don't join, because my YouTube content will not be affected. I appreciate your support either way. Alright, I'll see you next week.